There's seven minutes to you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous now. Let me start with a question, okay? Um, how would you see books if they were invented after video games? So these things here, okay? What sort of things would you come up with? Like, you know, what's it do? Where's its volume control? Does it use a stylus? Um, is it wireless? You know, do you have to recharge it? Is it touchable? Um, does it flip open? You know, you get the idea, you know, that how do we actually think about books? Um, but think about this, most of the kids in our classrooms today actually spend more of their lives using computers than they actually do books. But yet, we still keep going on about the books, don't we? We talk a different language sometimes. You know, give a child a textbook and a computer and to say to them, go and look up what is global warming, okay? And nine times out of ten, they're going to go on to Google rather than actually look up the textbook. And they're going to be reading stuff that they don't understand at a higher level than what we actually want them to read or expect them to read as well. You know, my son is six, and uh, we got away and got Mario Kart, and it took him one month to beat me on Mario Kart Wii. A year later, and there is not one game in our house that I can beat him at, all right? But yet, we still insist on reading the books more than playing the games. Maybe that's a bad thing in word books there, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me give you a quote here. Um, Tony Wagner in the Global Achievement Gap makes the case that schools aren't actually failing, regardless of what we're told by people like Mr. Gove. Um, in today's competitive global knowledge economy, all students need new skills for college, careers and citizenship. The failure to give all students those new skills leaves today's youth and our country at an alarming competitive disadvantage. This is not news. Schools haven't changed. The world has. That's not news either. And our schools are not failing. Rather, they are obsolete. Maybe this is news. Even the ones that score the best in league tables and exams. This is a very difficult problem requiring an altogether different solution. In other words, what we're basically saying is schools are obsolete. So what we do is actually obsolete. So here's my big question. Okay? My big question is this, how do we make school relevant again? How do we make it a real experience for our students? Okay? Well, I've got two things that I think make a difference here. First of all, why learning? And I believe that learning and teaching in the classroom has got to have that why factor. I don't mean just showing them an iPad and going, hey, isn't this girl? Okay? Um, when's the last time that your lesson had buzz? You know, when's the last time that the kids left your room buzzing about the lesson, or the last time that they came back after break and went, oh, we talked about that all over break? You know, that is what we need to introduce back in the education again. Um, when's the last time you had a parent who said to you, I've been dying to meet you because my child talks about you all of the time? Now, listen, I know, teachers on a Friday night, that means it's all of us, okay? We are those why teachers because we're prepared to give up Friday night to be here. I know that. So we Friday even, the night's done you <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the second thing is ICT stretch, you know? I believe we need to stretch the kids using ICT. You know, we want to teach the basics, but then we need to move. Let's not get caught up and teach them the same thing time and time and time and time again. And I think we're guilty of that in the, as we move from primary to secondary school. In the secondary school, we teach them the same skills that they learned in primary school. And we need to do better than that. It's something we need to improve upon. We need to give them more opportunities to be creative. We need to spend less time teaching the software and more time saying, just go and do it. Okay? Solve the problem. You know, I must admit, I find that most VLEs today are very restrictive. And I know that there's some very good examples, you know, like Moodle and Learning NI and StudyWiz and stuff like that. But you know what? I want learning to be more elastic than that. I want the learning to be more creative and to instill more creativity as well. Um, whenever students use the web, I want them to use this as a launch base, not actually as some box that they live inside. I don't want to control learning. I want learning to actually start from me, but not end with me. I want them to explore. I want them to be hungry for information. So that whenever I say something to them, like, let's have a look at ethnic diversity in Belfast. I start with a YouTube list, and they come back to me, and they say to me, I found a better one, sir. 
All right, that's what I want. No, I remember the day. Oh, <laughs> fine head. Yeah. That was my first ever website that I did. Well, I'll come back though. I remember the day that whenever the, the, the September 11th Twin Towers attack hit New York. I remember it because I sat with my class watching um, what unfolded on an old RM computer that sat in the corner on, you know, that trolley? You know that trolley? Right? And uh, so it sat there, and we all sat mesmerized, and I thought to myself, this is how learning should be, where we're all in this together. So I created this first website, and since then things have sort of changed, and I've tried to make my kids start with the learning online, okay? Um, because software is involved, and I've been through so many different um, evolvements of the different things that we can actually do. You know, looking stuff up online is actually easy to do, but we want to try and inspire the kids to do more than this as well. I'm not out of time, so what I'm going to do is quickly, I want to leave with you five, five top tips in one minute. Here we go. First one is this, using QR codes. I discovered this this week. All right? It's an amazing thing that we can actually do because we can actually stick a little, you get a worksheet, put a QR code on it, and the kids are already with their, with their phones looking it up. It's going straight to the revision site that links straight to it. I love it, it's fantastic. Skip it. I discovered this about five days ago, right? <laughs> Basically, what you do is very simple. Have you ever wanted to sort of take little clips of newspapers and stuff that you read online? This is what Scoop It does. I love it. I've been doing global warming with some of my kids. And I just put it all into one big bag. It's amazing. And then they just go to it. The next one is Bubbleus, okay? I love this one too because my kids, they, like, they sometimes struggle with hard concepts. So what I do, I've put this together for them and stick it on their table and then they just go around and go, oh look, I can see what that does. Amazing. That's my A-level kids, by the way. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> beaten by the mother. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you uh, think him rather on yeah, the uh, yeah. yeah, but that you were saying earlier on, really, if you've got a presentation tonight, we really would love to get up on the wiki because there's so many things coming up people so quickly. <laughs> It'd be great to sit back and evaluate it and look at it again. We're into the last ten minutes.